Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist and craniosacral therapist for people and animals, and this is Tristan Corgi, and welcome to, I believe it's episode nine of Conversations with a Corgi. Today we're continuing our series of teaching you some of the tea touches that we use when we're working with animals. I have been a tea touch practitioner for over 30 years, and I my dog's falling off his pillows again, <laughs> and I have had the great pleasure of counting Linda Tellington Jones as one of my friends during these many years, and it is really a privilege to be able to do tea touch work with animals and people around the country and around the world. So just a quick review of where we're at. We have covered the clouded leopard, where you're using just the ends of your fingers on the flat side and the lying leopard where you use a little bit more of the flat sides of your fingers and the warmth of your hand. And then we've also talked about how to do the T-touch um, circles using the face of a clock, starting at the six on the bottom of the clock and making a circle around the clock and a quarter of a circle back to the nine. So that all of your T-touch circles are really a circle and a quarter. And when you're doing these circles, they're, the clock face is um, about an inch or a half an inch wide. It's just a tiny little clock face. And it's really important that you imagine the face of a clock when you're doing this work. And as well, try to keep your circles very, very round. As we have reviewed in the prior talks, you want to have your thumb and your first finger uh, two or three inches apart. You don't want them straining and you don't want them so close that it puts tension in your hand because that will affect the quality of the T-touches that you do with your pet. So we also want to remember that part of why we do T-touches is to increase relaxation and bring body awareness to areas of the body and also to help with recovery from surgery, wounds, or an injury. T-touches also improve an animal's self-confidence, and this is really important when you have a shy or fearful animal or an animal that's having trouble getting along with other animals. Confidence is an uh, important quality for our dogs to have, and sadly, my poor Tristan here, his name is Intrepid Tristan because he was initially very brave and confident. And then, sadly, my friend Heather and I had a bit of a mishap when we were introducing him to her dogs when he was a wee little puppy. And the two dachshunds chased him under a car and really terrified him. And my other corgi, Comet, was able to come to the rescue and chase the dachshunds away. But in the meantime, Tristan was really scared to death, literally. And so since then, he has not been the most confident dog. He's seven now. He has attended several T-Touch training classes with me, with Linda Tallington, and various friends of mine in the classes working with him, and he has improved his confidence a lot. I've really been impressed with the changes in him. For instance, when we had um, an event here in Northampton a few months ago, my friends decided they wanted to walk up this long metal uh, set of stairs to the top of kind of a, a metal deck to take pictures and look over the crowds in the area. And I had Tristan with me. Well, he walked right up those stairs no problem. A short little guy like him, you could see right through them. And a lot of people were afraid going up those stairs, including myself. And once I got up there, mm -hmm. and he was just literally standing on grates, and you could see straight down three stories to the ground, I was really impressed with his confidence and his ability to handle that. And I had to stand myself on a bit of a rug that was up there because it just felt so weird to be suspended in the air, tied to an ancient brick building. It's the oldest theater um, in the United States, this place where we were. So uh, I was really impressed with how far Tristan has come thanks to his T-Touch training. And if you have a dog or a cat or a horse or even yourself with some issues that you believe that T-Touch could help with, which is really everything, Linda Tellington is doing a class in Rockville, Maryland in May, and you can find out more about that on the Tellington T-Touch website. And it's a wonderful opportunity to work with Linda herself and to experience the miracles that happen in every Tellington training class. If you have a dog with any kind of problems, I can't encourage you enough to come to this class, or if you work in a shelter, or if you rescue dogs, or if you foster dogs, the skills you will learn will really help you 
in your whole relationship with animals, um, not just in your work, but in your life. So it's a rare opportunity and I really encourage people to come to that and we'll talk more about it as it gets closer. So today we're going to talk more about the raccoon touch. To do the raccoon touch, you're going to use the very tips of your fingers. That's the part that's by your nails, the very tips, not the bottom of your finger here, but the tips on the top. Now, raccoon touch, like the other touches, got its name from an animal, the raccoon. And when you think about how a raccoon washes its food in a stream and the way it holds it when it's eating, it's using just its little fingers. And so that's how we developed the name for this touch because it really is like making a little raccoon paw when you're doing this touch. We use this touch around the head, around the mouth, and on the whole body when we're particularly working with sensitive or shy animals. So, of course, I did plenty of raccoon touches with Tristan after his incident with the dachshunds and he has really become good friends with those dogs to this day. Um, the raccoon touch is also really useful around wounds to reduce pain and swelling. This is one of the touches that I have taught a lot of people um, in dog emergency classes, CPR classes, things like that, and a lot of vets and vet techs are familiar with this touch when they've got a really big wound coming in and they're waiting uh, for all the things that are going to happen to the dog to get that addressed. So the other thing you want to know about the raccoon touch is that for swelling, you're going to make slow, very tiny circles with the tips of your fingers using a very light pressure. When you think about a swelling, that's something that's been hit recently and is still painful to the touch and is causing pain in the whole body. So of course you'd want to use tiny circles and a very light touch and very slow circles because a fast circle will make the body fearful that it could be re-injured. So you want to do a very slow, precise circle. The other thing you need to know about the raccoon touch is that if you have long, beautiful fingernails, you might need to trim them back so that they're even with your fingertips in order to do raccoon touch. Some people even just um, trim back the first two fingers and just use those. If you're working like I have with hamsters, I've used just my index finger to make these touches. It's important to keep the connection between all five fingers, even when you're using only one. On small animals like puppies and kittens, you might only use a one or a two pressure, and again, just a couple of fingers because they're so small, and on Tristan's little mouth, I might end up using one or two fingers. So this is a really useful T-touch. Um, I've used it myself quite a lot with cats, and as I said, with hamsters, chinchillas, rabbits. I work with a lot of rabbits. And again, just a reminder of the pressure. A one is what you can feel under your eyelid, the lightest you can make it. And a three is what's comfortable there. So practice on yourself that three pressure because mostly with raccoon, we don't use more than a three pressure. Tristan's a little nervous because it's extremely windy here today and there's sounds outside. So, uh, and again, back onto your hand, three times that three pressure is a six. That is way more pressure than we'll ever use with raccoon because it's such a precise kind of touch. You don't need to use deep pressure for it to go deeply into the body and into the nervous system and into the cells. So keep that in mind. It's a really, really good T-touch for injury and for nervous and shy animals. And generally we do do this a bit slower. Our circles can be one, two, or three seconds long. We rarely do a three second circle because it does cause a drop in the blood pressure. If you have high blood pressure though, uh, when you're sitting down, you can try this to help address that as long as you can monitor your blood pressure. And <clears throat> you don't wanna do a one second circle with a raccoon touch because that would be too fast. And since you're using this often for injuries, it could um, make the injury much more sensitive. So to do the raccoon touch, as I said, you're going to have your hand shaped like a paw and you're using the very tips of your fingers. And again, that middle finger is the one making the circle. And the thumb may be a bit closer to the hand. When you're using the flat of your hand, it's going way up your arm into your wrist when you make the motion. When you're doing the raccoon touch, it's really just in your fingers. So that thumb can be relaxed and closer to the forefinger. So you just want to make that little tiny circle and a quarter. Okay, Tristan, let's try this on you. 
so I'm just saying hi to him first and then we're gonna can you put your piggies up here so you won't fall he's so short I don't know if you guys can see this but I'm just doing a circle and a quarter and remember I'm noticing if I'm going clockwise or counterclockwise and again with the camera and with my right or left hand it is really hard to tell so just go the direction that your hand tends to go and notice if you're going to the clockwise or counterclockwise direction try it the other way and as I said initially we often do this around the mouth later on we'll be talking about mouth work and when and why you should do it and these little raccoon touches sorry for this these little raccoon touches are very useful to do around the outside of the mouth. My sister has a wonderful dental drop product and if you have trouble getting that drop into your pet's mouth these little raccoon touches can be helpful and that is drjudymorgan.com and those are dental drops that she has and they are really good to reduce bacteria in the mouth and to give your pet fresh breath and to keep the teeth clean to prevent unneeded dental surgery later in the animal's life or a cleaning. They're really, really valuable. Check her website if you'd like to try them. And as I said, these little raccoon touches are a good way to introduce using the drops in your animal's mouth because we don't always touch our animals in their mouths. And this is a good way to give them a comfortable way to get familiar with us doing this. You can even lift up the gum a little bit here. Sorry, Biff and I can do these little raccoon touches in his mouth. Now his mouth is a little dry right now and it would be awesome if I had moist fingers to do this with. It would be a lot more comfortable for him. What, am I going the wrong way? Did you see how he was turning his head? He's like making this motion because my circles were not comfortable. And I can do this even on his teeth. I had a corgi with a slab fracture on his tooth from, I think he was catching a ball or a rock or something and it was so painful can you imagine having a fracture on your tooth and so I was able to do these little tea touches on him right away and it really prevented some pain and swelling and um, pretty soon a couple days later I got him to New Jersey to my sister and she ended up just taking the piece of the tooth off the slab and was really surprised at how healthy um, the tooth was in spite of the fracture um, a lot of times in animals the area gets infected and they have to lose the entire tooth um, and Comet was fortunate that that did not have to happen to him and I really credit a lot of that to being able to do tea touches there and keep the area clean so that it did not get infected so that's these little raccoon touches <laughs> if you can't see through his fur I still have my volunteer corgi from England here and we can do these little raccoon touches around the sides of his mouth a circle and a quarter starting at the six and going back to the nine and I'm probably doing these a little bit too fast now if my stuffed corgi had a wound let's say right here on his side I fluff his hair up I would do these little raccoon touches around that swelling very slowly and gently and try this on yourself if you run into something I got smacked by my car door yesterday and I have a little bruise on my arm and this would be a great thing to do to keep the swelling down and to bring circulation to the area so that it recovers more quickly and in fact, to that end, often on myself, if I have an injury, I will put Arnica uh, cream on my fingers when I do this, which is even more helpful. So the raccoon touch is with the very tips of your fingers. This is a really good um, touch to use around your eyes, on your face, around your pet, around their eyes, if you have to do eye drops for your animal for any reason. It's very, it can be very soothing on your face. And if you've had a long day, um, it can be very relaxing to do some raccoon touches around your face. So using very light contact, and it is okay sometimes if your fingernails are making contact, as long as they're not sharp. I know my mom has um, 
little short fingernails, but she often trims them so they're fairly pointy on the end, and that might be too much, but if she trims the point off, it would be fine. So what do we use the Raccoon Touch for? Arthritis. Again, the, the light pressure, all of these are pretty much a one to a three pressure. If your dog had arthritis in his knees in the front here, which is really his wrist in human anatomy, you might do these little raccoon touches around the joint. There are eight bones in that joint, and any one of them could be becoming arthritic, and there could be heat and compression between those bones, and these little raccoon touches can be very relaxing. If you have a cardigan corgi, or perhaps a dachshund, or some other breed where the front legs turn out, um, this is also a really good touch to do on their knees to maintain health because that turning out is really a rotation of the joints and it, they are prone to arthritis in older age, particularly in that type of dog. This is a good touch to use for balance. Um, and again, that you might use a two or a three pressure for that. But it does just draw attention to an area. So for instance, if I had a dog that had had ACL surgery who came to me, which the ACL on the dog is back here in their stifle. That's where their true knee is that corresponds to our knee. And if he's recovering nicely but still not fully weight-bearing on that side, I might do these little raccoon touches down his leg and around that side of his body to bring awareness so that he will start to weight-bear evenly on both hind legs. This is a good touch to do on the paws, particularly with dogs that are afraid of slippery surfaces. It's very important when your dog is a senior in particular, when they're not as active, the pad of the paw um, becomes quite furry. And this fur can get quite long, and it's very, very slippery on floors. And many people, you don't usually need to trim this when your dog is young, um, but as they get older, they're not walking as much, they're not as active, and so the fur goes really long there. And people don't notice that their pets are sliding all over the floor and really scared to walk in the kitchen and things. So it's very important to keep that area trimmed. And again, the raccoon touches all around the pad are really great to help your dog be familiar with touch in this area and to bring awareness to their paws and also to help you um, be able to trim that fur from between their pads. That's a really important consideration with this touch is to be able to work on the pads of the feet and the toenails. I don't know if Tristan can show us one of his paws. Come up here, Biff. See, he's uh, he keeps his pretty trimmed because we do a lot of walking. But you're just going to go around each pad, make a little circle with it, and then do your raccoon touches right in between the pads and even the little toenails. And that will help your dog if he's fearful of slippery surfaces. If your dog has decreased circulation to an area, again, my guy here who just had his ACL surgery, this is a great thing to do to increase the circulation around the area after a surgery, these little raccoon touches. Nail trimming, again, you can do it directly on the nail. If you have a big dog with big toenails, you can actually get your finger on there to do a T-touch on the toenail itself. And that's gonna put a little movement up through the paw, which can be tough for some dogs. But this is a really gentle way to get them used to that. This touch also promotes healing, particularly at the more gentle pressures of a one or a two. And it's really, really a great touch to use with puppies and kittens because they're so little. And it's a very precise touch. And sometimes puppies and kittens are pretty squirmy and this will really help get their attention and get them to settle a little bit. And I can't emphasize enough how useful this touch is if you've got a puppy that's in that teething stage and they're biting and nibbling on you and the furniture and everything else. I will give them something that I want them to chew on, like one of their toys, and then work on their mouth with these little touches while they're chewing on the toy. And this can really help them. Sometimes in T-Touch world, we say that if an animal is bringing attention to an area, like chewing on you with their mouth, that that's the area that needs the work, the mouth. And sometimes if an animal is acting like that, you can't work on their mouth. So then the other thing we do is go to the farthest part of the animal from the mouth where it's comfortable for them and work our way up towards that area that they're calling um, that they need attention. So if you've got a horse that nibbles on you, 
These little raccoon touches are good on their gums, and you can go on the side of their mouth where they don't have teeth and get a few of these little raccoon touches. And again, it's very helpful if your fingers are wet when you're working in the mouth with these little raccoon touches. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the time when we are talking about mouth work. So again, today's touch was the raccoon touch. It's just the tips of the fingers. We had the clouded leopard, which was the ends of the phalanges, really. And then we had the lying leopard, which is a little bit more, and this part of your hand making contact. So we have the raccoon touch, it's very precise, circle and a quarter. We have the lying leopard. So we're really using the warmth of your hand. And then we had the clouded leopard. So you can see the difference in those touches. Tomorrow we're going to talk about the abalone tea touch. And it's one of my favorites. Um, we don't always use it so much on dogs and cats. But I really love the abalone tea touch um, and use it a lot on even dogs and cats and even the little hamsters I have worked on. I can get my hand over a little hamster and do an abalone over his entire body. So I'd like to remind you again that Linda Tellington will be doing a class for I think it's five or seven days in the middle of May in Rockville, Maryland at a wonderful, wonderful dog training center down there and my friend Pam Wanbeer who is also a Tellington Touch practitioner and a craniosacral therapist for animals in the Washington DC area sponsors the class. It's always a wonderful time and as it gets closer I will talk more about it and I really think that you would get a lot out of it to benefit you and the pets and animals in your life, lives. So we'll close today again as we have been with a heart hug. So you just cross your hands over your heart and you're going to make a circle and a quarter with the six at the bottom. You breathe in as you go up and around the circle. You exhale and come back to the nine. And it's so wonderful to do this and think about three things that you love about your animal or three things you're grateful for or as a way to connect with an animal that's no longer here that you love and miss. And I use this um, heart hug at the end of my yoga classes with seniors at the Veterans Hospital where I teach yoga and I ask them to think about three things that they like about themselves and these men are 79, 85, 95 years old and when you ask them to take a moment and think about what they like about themselves it's really challenging they have not done this in their life they have been serving their family, their country their friends, their jobs, their entire lives, and haven't really taken the time for themselves. So it's also nice to do a heart hug and think about three things that you like about yourself. This is Sally Morgan, craniosacral therapist, physical therapist, and advanced T-touch practitioner for animals and people, and the author of the Amazon best-selling book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with Animals. And thank you so much for tuning in for Conversations with a Corgi, Raccoon T-touch, and tomorrow we will continue our series of tea touches with abalone. And on Saturday, we will do Facebook Live from the Corgi Beach Party near Worcester, Mass, where there will be a Corgi Bikini Parade at some point in the morning. I don't know that that will be live, but surely there will be pictures. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.